purpose of the record, my name is Job Scott. I am advised that I stand convicted of the offense of defeating or obstructing the course of justice as defined in terms of section 134, subsection one, subsection one subparagraph E of the criminal process, criminal law codification and reform act, chapter 923. I'm 50 years old. I have lived in this world for at least half a century. The experience of the past 50 years of my existence have nurtured within me a mature understanding of the consequences of different sets of events that occurs in one's life. I have attended various court sessions in my capacity as a legal practitioner and also as an accused person. I have gained the full appreciation arising from that experience of the use, misuse, and abuse of the legal processes. My life, yes. Mm -hmm. yes, Your Worship. He is focusing on mitigation. I think if the court allows him to read the entire statement, you shall realize that there is a lot of mitigation in that statement. It is rich in factually and legal. Thank you, Your Worship. My life has been without blemish. I have been accused of every imaginable crime in this country, including allegations of subverting a constitutional government. I have always pleaded and defended my innocence. I live within the strict confines of the law. I became a lawyer because I have faith in the words eloquently inscribed at the University of Zimbabwe, Faculty of Law, Use est born at aqua. The law is the act of goodness and equity. I also believe in the principles that use ab remedial. Where there is wrong, there is a remedy. I have never taken the law into my own hands all my life. I have always been a faithful servant of the law. Through my work as a legislator, I always try for the promotion of laws that serves the needs of the people. I do not wish to see the law being transformed into an oppressive tool on the people by the poor. I was born in October 1972 in the good communal land. I grew up under the oppressive Smith regime. Zimbabwean independence came when I was just a young boy, eight years of age. Those were the days when freedom fighters, our fathers and our other villagers, would sit us in the village compound and explain to us why the liberation war was being fought. Much of what I am today was molded on the framework of the values of freedom, equity, and human dignity taught to me by my forebearers. These are the values I cherish and espouse to this day. They are the same values that made me without hesitation, accept the brief to represent the family of more blessing Ali. May her so rest in eternal peace. Immediately following her disappearance, little did I know that I would this day be in the door, paying the price for what I thought to be a noble enterprise. I seek not my glory, but the collective emancipation of all Zimbabweans and justice for the spirit of more blessing Ali. Those who made that more blessing I and those who persecute me today may have my love for the moment, but when history chapters are allowed, posterity will judge me for what I for what I truly am, a humble and a obedient servant of the people, or a willing instrument for the advancement of the, the values of Ubuntu, a firm believer against impunity regardless of one's political affiliation or status in life. A legal practitioner being shackled for taking up the cause of his oppressed client who died a miserable death in the most violent way imaginable. I grew up in a village as a single boy. I attended our family's crops and head cattle 
without the voice of her age. Passion and determination drove me from the village to join one of the most esteemed professions the world over, that being of a legal practitioner. Passion and determination also drove me from being a simple village boy to a public leader and granted me the privilege of representing initially the people of St. Mary's and subsequently the people of Zengeza West in Zimbabwe, the House of Parliament. My present circumstances have robbed me of the opportunity to remain of service to the electorate which bestowed their faith in me as their parliamentary representative. I've been a leader throughout my life. I've been entrusted with leadership positions since my days at primary school and right through my days at university. I had the privilege of not only leading the students at the University of Zimbabwe, but I was also entrusted with leading students in all tertiary institutions of Zimbabwe through the auspices of the Zimbabwe National Students Union. I am a founder member of the Movement for Democratic Change, led by the late Morgan Richard Chagrai in September 1999. I am currently a senior political leader in Zimbabwe's largest opposition political party, the Citizens Coalition for Change. I have become accustomed to selfless sacrifices for the betterment of those I lead. My commitment and dedication to the national cause is a calling that I will never have to get from, from not with the notwithstanding the persecution I encounter as the son. It is a dedication to strive and seek for a just society where men and women, rich or poor, the powerful and the poorest, the affluent and the, the downtrodden, will live in equality and happiness. The security of persons is at the core of my heart. No form of injustice or persecution will move me, not even an inch away from the cries of the people. Let me be labeled a villain today. Let the madras of no blessing Ali and my tormentors be the heroes of the moment. Posterity will judge me. History chapters are replete with these kinds of oppressions. Oppressors read from the same script. I am neither the first nor the last to be nailed for seeking justice for the downtrodden. That is the only crime I have committed. I did not seek to defeat justice, far from it. Justice in the eyes of the oppressor is injustice to the oppressed. If I am guilty of seeking universal justice that is accessible, accessible and applicable to all regardless of status, let the oppressors celebrate. They have won the battle, but the war will be won by the people. I have been in detention under social confinement since the 14th of June 2022. Shackled in chains like a terrorist. Over the ten, past 10 months, I've been kept away from my family. I've been deprived of my ability to fend for my children. I have been kept away from my occupation as the representative of the people of Sengesa West. I've been kept away from my law office and pre prevented from representing my clients. I've been prevented from, pro from providing legal support to the grieving family of four blessing Island. Who only desire justice for what happened to their daughter, sister, mother, cousin, friend, and confidant. Though the state extracted a conviction from its words of lies and unscrupulously obtained evidence, the real solution to this matter lies in the society itself. The legal issues that were before this, this court are basic and elemental. It is certain, certainly repulsive to any right thinking citizen that a crime can be born out of and sustained by allowing a police officer in the comfort of his office without having anything else to do but surfing the internet for entertainment on YouTube to come across a video created and uploaded by enterprising content creator and therefore arrest a person who neither had knowledge of the video and is underway of his circulation and send them to jail. More so, Based on the video clip found on an entertainment site created and posted by unknown people seeking to provide entertainment, this creates a dangerous precedence for our criminal justice system. Those with a score to settle against others have been given a cut of 
They can easily pay enterprises, content creators, to create a video of a person. They have a vendetta against, make certain utterance that can be deemed to be offensive, and leak it to our gullible police of officers who have no willing to investigate death but exceeding zeal to arrest and detain. History will be my judge. Posterity will be my judge. I have no control over my fate today. I can only leave it to history to be the judge. I will let society to whom this court must be alleged pronounce its own verdict. If I have strayed from any of the features of Ubuntu, if I was wrong for me to join the court for the justice for more blessing I, if I should have refrained from offering legal representation to a family in grief, then I will gladly accept whatever punishment is meted against me. I leave it to history to judge me. My conscience is clear. My faith given my demise while shackled in the oppressor's prison will not put an end to the quest for justice. The pages of history will always turn at some point to the victim's glory. It may take tickets, even centuries, but the truth shall come out. Those who came before me succeeded in removing the yoke of colonial rule. It took them close to a century to do so. I am only 50 years old. The words of Shkrubi have been my compassion, was, has been my companion and friend for over 10 months now. Prison walls confined the iconic Nelson Mandela for 27 years, but, not, but did not confine his ideals and did not kill his spirit. Prison walls was confined several leaders of the liberation struggle, but it failed to contain the ideals they stood for. The hangman's noose cut short the life of Miriam and Zebu Kagun, but did not kill their ideals they stood for. Whatever penalty that may be imposed against me will not contain the ideal of seeking justice against the callous matter of more blessed Island, nor will it contain the ideal of a free, peaceful, and just Zimbabwe. I resonate with the following writings of Fibon Mron. I was born in a loud defunct racist country called Rhodesia. All Africans born in that country were without political rights, human rights, or any kind of rights. But in spite of it all, my spirit was always free. Thank you.